brought to my attention that casually mentioning my parents sealing my windows shut is a little strange. Yeah, I guess that's not actually a casual topic. Let's dive a little deeper. I'm a gentle parent, or so I've heard. I never actually heard the term until I started talking about parenting on the internet. I always just parented intuitively. It never made sense to me to yell or harshly punish kids to try to teach them. I certainly struggle to learn when I'm feeling stressed out or unsafe. When I had kids and I look back to how I was raised, I didn't have a lot of positive parenting examples to build on. What I did have was a plethora of parenting behaviors that I was never gonna repeat. We hear a lot about breaking the cycle in generational traumas, but we don't often talk about the different ways to do it. Parenting our kids in a radically different way than how we were raised is difficult, and I think we need to talk about it. They say it takes a village, and I think in a lot of ways, our village is online now. The thing is, on the scale of what I would have considered normal to traumatic, that was kind of normal. Really think about this. Think about your childhood. What went on behind the walls of your home growing up? At what point did you realize that not everyone else had the same experience? For young kiddos especially, their normal is just normal. They have no outside perspectives, nothing to compare it to. If they're experiencing it, they might think everyone's experiencing it. I don't think it occurred to me just how different and actually wrong things were in my home until I was in middle or high school. I learned to stomach the trauma because it was my normal. If I imagine my kids going through some of the normal things that I did, it turns my stomach. Our kids don't get to decide how we parent them. We make decisions that they have to live with. I think a logical question to ask here is why did they seal my windows shut? Yeah, I still think that's a logical question. If someone told me that, I would also be asking why. Well, they found out I'd been sneaking out. A lot. That was a summer filled with incredibly risky behavior and incredibly poor mental health. I didn't understand what was happening to me or why I felt the way that I did. I was reacting impulsively to those feelings as a way to try to feel better, as a cry for help. After hearing the reasoning, if you think the response was valid, I want to tell you why I disagree. When my parents found out I was sneaking out, they never took the time to ask me why or talk to me at all. It was immediate anger and punishment. There was no, why is this behavior happening so we can try to solve it? It was just, this behavior needs to stop this instant by force. I'm so mad at you. You're losing everything that has ever brought you joy, which did not help me feel better. And I just got sneakier. This absolutely influenced my parenting. When my kids make a big mistake, the first thing I do is take a moment to calm myself down. If it's not an emergency, we don't need to respond right away. And when I do respond, I try to do so in a neutral way, focusing on my child and their behavior instead of my feelings surrounding it. If we can find the root of the problem, we can try to solve it. And if we solve those issues, we're gonna help to change the behavior. To be clear, the reckless decisions I made as a teen still give me anxiety to this day. Now that I'm in trauma therapy, I've learned that those behaviors were a textbook trauma response for teenagers. Turns out trauma symptoms present differently for different age groups. Either way, I still do get anxious about those decisions, but I'm really working to find peace with my past. And I'm trying to make sure that I raise my kids in a way that their worst teenage decisions aren't life altering. I've reflected a lot on my childhood, both in trying to heal from it and do better for my kids. I've spent a lot of time on this and I'll continue to. When I was a kid, I didn't want kids because I didn't want anyone to feel about me the way that I felt about my parents, and I didn't want to make anyone feel the way that I felt. When I was a young child, I thought that parents were monsters, but I knew I was a good person and I thought if I became a parent, I would lose control of myself and become a monster. Well, I have kids now obviously. And thankfully, I am no monster. I spent a lot of time deconstructing my own experiences and figuring out how to navigate similar circumstances with my kids. My parents were cold and cruel. There was no safety and warmth in my childhood home. But in my home, we've built it on a foundation of love and support. I'm learning from my parents' mistakes, which is not to say I don't make my own, but I'm not making theirs, and that's important. I am absolutely making my own mistakes, but I try my best to take accountability and make better decisions 
in the same way I'm teaching my kids to. There's no do as I say, not as I do here. It is okay for us to make mistakes. It is okay for our kids to witness them. It's important for our kids to see us make an honest effort to make positive changes. One of the things I realized was that my parents took a reactive approach to parenting where I find a proactive approach to be more beneficial. One example of how my approach is radically different than my parents' approach is in regards to school. Missing assignments. When I was in high school, I'd missed a bunch of math assignments because I missed a few days of school, I didn't really understand the concepts, and I was depressed. When my mom found out about this, she showed up at my lunch period and screamed at me in front of all of my peers. Then I was grounded and had all of my privileges taken away. Surprisingly, this didn't help me learn math or improve my mental health. When my kid missed assignments from missing school, I talked to her about taking a proactive approach and asking her teacher for the assignments and for extra time to complete them. I asked her if she needed extra help. I sat with her while she completed those assignments and made sure she took small breaks when she was getting stressed out. She finished the assignments, turned them in, got back on top of things, and felt confident about it. The only feedback I got from my parents was negative and discipline and punishment. My parents were always angry. That's how I remember them. They didn't take time to have positive time with me. But if I messed up or they thought I messed up, that was bad for me. I would get a lot of negative attention. So I'd keep my nose down, keep to myself, and try to hide everything from them just in case I was messing up and didn't realize it. Growing up in a horrible environment led me to make horrible decisions. I wasn't sneaking out because I was happy at home. Kids aren't always going to make logical or reasonable decisions. I was so lost at the time that I was just looking for anything that would make me feel better or even just different. I found out there was a huge reaction and it didn't even stop me. My angsty inner teen still gets a kick out of this one if I'm being honest. I'm unsurprisingly still not on good terms with my parents. We don't talk often and when we do it's pretty strained, but this particular decision they made to seal my window shut because they were so mad at me, I never snuck out the window. <laughs> I used the back door and I know it's not funny, but it's kind of funny to me. Trying to fix a problem when you don't understand the cause isn't likely to produce a good solution. Why? Our kids ask us why a thousand times a day when they're little. When they stop asking why as much, I start asking why more. I want to understand the way they think about things, the reason that they make the decisions they do. Getting to know my kids better helps me parent them better. What could my parents have done differently? Well, we don't have time for that specific list, friends. I have time for it now. I even checked in with my brother so we could compile a non-exhaustive list. They could have taken the time to talk to us and connect with us in a positive way. They could have taken an interest in our interest in hobbies and gotten to know us as people. They could have cared more about us than the way we made them look. They could have made sure that we were healthy and fed and taken the time to learn about what foods we liked and didn't like. They could have cared about our friends or even let us have friends. They could have not left us alone for hours and hours on end from a young age, latchkey kids. They could have taught us anything useful for our adult life. We're talking cleaning, self-care, money management. They could have not talked badly about each other to us as if we were their therapist. They could have not said hurtful and harmful things when they were angry. They could have supported and encouraged us in a positive way at all. They could have taken mental health issues seriously, made sure that we were safe both physically and mentally, given us a safe place to be ourselves, and they could have just not hit us. That one seems pretty simple, honestly. I'm just gonna stop the list there. I think you get the point. For this specific thing, they could have made sure my basic needs were met and that I was feeling loved and supported at home. Unpacking my parents' behavior has helped me to become a better parent. Taking the time to think, what did my parents do wrong? What could they have done better? Gives me an opportunity to do those things better. Then I take it a step further. These are the things that I won't do with my kids because of my childhood, but my kids aren't me. So what other things can I do to meet my kids' needs based on who they are as individuals? It plays into a bigger picture of taking mental health seriously. If you've been on my channel for any amount of time, you've heard me talk about mental health, and I'm gonna keep talking about it. When I was growing up, mental health was much more stigmatized. My parents felt shame about their kids' struggles. They didn't wanna help us because of how it would make them look. They didn't wanna help us because they didn't think it was possible for us to actually be struggling in the way that we were. What do you have to be depressed about? Oh, you think you have it bad? You have no idea. No amount of get over it is going to cure mental illness. Kids can have mental health problems and they can be genetically predisposed to them. I check in with my kids' mental health as often as I make sure they're feeling physically okay. Breaking the cycle isn't just about the decisions we make when it comes to discipline. There are so many layers to unpack. Just before, I had gone through one of the most traumatic events in my life that I'm still healing from because I didn't get help till I sought it out myself. I've been on a long journey of working on my mental health and finally at 30, I have solid treatment and feel legitimately hopeful. I will never leave my kids feeling hopeless, but I also 
also think it's important to note that trauma is trauma and kids can have trauma that has nothing to do with the way they're being parented. One of my kiddos is medically complex and has trauma from all the medical procedures and surgeries. We keep that in mind as she grows because unresolved trauma can lead to a lot of issues. I've always heard that kids are resilient and while I believe that to be true, I don't believe that resilient means unaffected. One of my favorite lines from one of my favorite poems from one of my favorite poets, Andrea Gibson, comes to mind. Resiliency itself is an awful thing to grieve. I understand this line to mean that it can be so hard to cope with the things that we had to endure even though we got through them. I wasn't a bad kid, I was hurt and I didn't know what to do with that. Kids may know they're not feeling okay, but they may not have the language to explain it. As a parent, I open the communication and leave room for them to explore their feelings. One time my daughter told me she was stressed, so I asked her for the feeling under the stress. Was she also frustrated or overwhelmed or confused? I provided more language to help her navigate her communication. My kids are struggling, we talk and I listen and I look at my own behavior because sometimes parents can be a part of the problem. My parents weren't the self-aware type. My problems were always separate from them, in their opinion. I use my parents' failings as an inspiration to do better for my kids, with the understanding that I'm still gonna make mistakes, that even if I'm trying my best and have the best intentions, that I might still cause harm. But when I do, it's my responsibility to fix it. I check in with my kids about my parenting. There's two questions I use that give me a lot of good information. One, is there anything you need from me that I'm not doing? And two, is there anything I'm doing that's bothering you? We can do better for our kids even when we haven't experienced better. Anyway, thanks for being here, friends. If you wanna hear about how I give my kids second chance, check out this video or check out the whole playlist. Just make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next week. Okay, bye.